Where is your brother? Good fences make good neighbors, wrote Robert Frost in his poem Mending Wall. The brothers Cain and Abel might have agreed. The two brothers each made an offering to God. Cain brought a portion of his crops, and Abel brought meat from his sheep. The text tells us that God favored Abel's offering and had no regard for Cain's offering. So Cain killed Abel. A good fence might have changed the way the brothers' relationship worked out. Joseph's brothers also might have benefited from a fence. Joseph could have been kept just far enough away that his brother's jealousy would not have been tempted. A fence might have prevented the brothers from selling Joseph into slavery. And what about us? Americans seem to live by the principle that good fences make good neighbors. Most of us adults are busy attending to our own tasks, working, maintaining the house, and traveling to activities. We may not notice what is happening with the people in our neighborhood. Good fences make good neighbors. That's not quite what Jesus had in mind when he said, love your neighbor as yourself. In fact, when a lawyer wanted Jesus to define the term neighbor, Jesus told him a story about a man who went out of his way to be neighborly to a person he didn't even know. Moreover, the Samaritan and the man from Jerusalem wouldn't be likely friends in ordinary circumstances. Then Jesus turned the lawyer's question around and asked who had acted like a neighbor. When the lawyer answered that it was the man who stopped to help, Jesus said, go and do likewise. And that's the whole point of Jesus' story. Jesus turns the question around to remind us not just of who our neighbors are, but that we are to be a neighbor, and not only to the people we like. Sometimes we need to be a neighbor to people who we'd like to keep on the other side of the fence. Jesus asks us to jump the fence and extend our hands and hearts. <laughs>